It's week 10 of the NFL, and we give you our best three bets for this Sunday, and it all starts right now. Hey guys, it's Matt from GrandstandBetters.com and we are back with our best three bets for week 10 in the NFL. We'll get to those plays in just a moment. But first, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our free picks, predictions, and contests throughout the entire NFL season. And while you're at it, smash that like button if you're ready for another fun-filled week in the NFL. I know I am. So without further ado, let's dive in. So week 10, and we're going to start with the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears in the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Bears at the moment favor by three points. Over under is set at 48.5. Now the Lions are coming off a good win last week against the Packers, but let's be honest. Is that really a good win the way the Packers have been this season? That puts the Lions at 2-6 and six on the season and ironically just one game back of second place in the NFC North. Now, they will face a Bears team in Chicago this week. That could be a problem for the Lions because they are not very good on the road. They have not won at all on the road, actually, this season, which is kind of weird. They are averaging 24 points per game on the season, but on the road, only 10 points per game this season. Jared Goff has not been phenomenal as he should be with some of the weapons he's had around him, although now Hawkinson has left the team. Goff only has 62% completion rate with just over 2,000 yards through the air. And although he has 14 touchdowns, he has also thrown seven interceptions. Now the Lions honestly don't need him to be like Patrick Mahomes because they do have a dynamic rushing attack with Williams and Swift. Those two have combined for about 800 yards on the ground, nine touchdowns with Williams being the go-to man in the red zone. As a team, the Lions average 5 yards per carry and 134 yards on the ground per game. Look for this Lions team to think run first this week as they face the third worst rushing defense in the league as Chicago's given up 147 yards per game on the ground. Now speaking of rushing attacks, the Chicago Bears, who are now 3-6 and six on the season, are number one in the NFL in rushing yards with nearly 200 yards per game on the ground. To put in perspective how successful and often they run the football, they actually have over 400 more rushing yards this season than passing yards, and their quarterback, Fields, leads the way with 600 yards on the ground and 91 attempts. Now, Herbert, you add him in, and that's a duo that averages 6.3 yards per carry. The good news for the Bears, though, is even though their rushing defense is awful, the Detroit Lions is actually worse. In fact, second worst in the NFL defending the run. They're giving up 149 yards per game. However, they are coming off an impressive performance against the Packers, only allowing Dylan and Jones to have 59 yards on 20 carries. Now, what is our best bet for this NFC matchup, you ask? Well, Lions, honestly, in our opinion, have been underperforming a little this season, and that starts with their defense. They're giving up a league-worst 30 points per game. Chicago hasn't been much better, giving up 24 points per game. And the Chicago weather is supposed to be around 37 degrees on Sunday afternoon, and both these teams will run the football first. Even though both of the defenses against the run are horrible, we do think this tends to be a lower scoring and closer game than one would imagine. We think this comes down to who can make the bigger passing plays when needed, as we both know both teams can run the football. Although the Chicago secondary is much better than Detroit's, Jared Goff, we will trust him more actually completing passes, as Fields has less than 59% completion rate on the season. Look for the Lions with Amon Ra St. Brown to make more big passing plays to keep this game close, maybe pull it off themselves. So with our first best bet of week number 10 in the NFL, we're going to take the Detroit Lions plus three over the Chicago Bears. Now with our second matchup of week number 10, we are going to look at the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins also in the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Dolphins three and a half point favorites over under set at 49.5 at the moment. So the Cleveland Browns, they're coming out of their bye week at three and five and living in Cleveland. All we're hearing is we're still going to make the playoffs. Well, Browns fans, I'm not sure why there's so much optimism. Stefanski is still your coach. He's 0-2 off bye weeks and you have Tua 
Allen, Brady, Burrow, and Jackson, the QBs, in five of the next six weeks that you face off, and you have a bad defense. But for the fair weather fans in Cleveland, we can understand why they think things are looking up here on the season. In week eight, we took care of business against the Bengals, 32 to 13. And shocker, Nick Chubb got 20 plus carries in a win. Jacoby Brissett, despite not being the best quarterback we've had, well, to be fair, he is far from the worst too, has done a nice job allowing us to be in games late. He just needs to limit poor decision making in the last five minutes of those games, not throwing any interceptions to be specific. And what was a terrible defense at the beginning of the season looks like they have started to churn the corner in the last two games, holding the Ravens and Bengals to 18 points per game. But they will face a Miami Dolphins team that is right there for a chance to take the AFC East division this season. They're 6-3 and three on the year, and they're coming off another show-stopping offensive performance against the Bears. They are second in the NFL with passing yards per game with nearly 300. And who knew Tua only needed Tyree Kill to make him look like an MVP. Tua is completing 70% of his passes, having thrown for 15 touchdowns and only three interceptions. And Hill already has 1,100 yards receiving. You add in Jalen Waddell, who has been a great second option. And between the two, they count for over 1,900 yards already through the air. Now, the rushing attack with the Dolphins is almost non-existent with Mostert and Edmonds averaging less than 68 yards per game. But who cares with this passing attack? The Cleveland Browns defense, though, especially their secondary, who struggled at the beginning of the season, has done a much better job for the most part recently. Over the last three games, they've held QBs to under 200 yards passing per game. And on the road this season, they've actually been pretty unreal, keeping the opposing quarterbacks to less than 145 yards passing. Now, what is our best bet in this AFC matchup? Well, the Cleveland Browns need to win this game if their fans want to have any chance to utter the word playoff push in a few weeks. Luckily this week, the Browns play a Dolphins rush defense who just gave up 178 yards on 15 carries to Justin Fields. So if, and this is a big if here, Stefanski hands the ball off to Chubb and Hunt throughout the game, they will keep this game close, maybe win it outright. So with our best bet for week number 10, number two, we're going to take the Cleveland Browns plus three and a half over the Miami Dolphins. And yes, that is a hundred percent biased. Now, before we get into our final pick of week number 10 in the NFL, just a reminder, if you're looking for the games we're actually betting for week 10, head on over to grandstandbetters.com, become part of our family, and start living that grandstand life. Links below in the description. We would love to have you join our community real soon. But as we mentioned, we do have one more best bet for week number 10, and that is in the Arizona Cardinals L.A. Rams matchup at the 4.30 p.m. Eastern time slot. Rams, one-point favorite at the moment, over-under set at 40.5. Cardinals, after getting DeAndre Hopkins back in the lineup three weeks ago, looked like they may have found their offense again, but then they ran into Geno Smith and the surprising Seahawks and dropped a 3-6 in, in last place in the NFC West. Penalties were the name of the game for the Cardinals last week, having 12 and never really allowing that offense to get a rhythm going. Murray was 25 of 35 for 175 and two touchdowns, but their defense gave up 421 yards and the Cardinals were just unable to catch up all game despite getting within three points with just minutes to play. The offense has been the problem all season long and some of that can be blamed on having Hopkins out of the lineup for the first six weeks, but it's also hard to score points when you run the least amount of plays per game in the NFL. They're going to go up against another top 10 defense here as the Rams only giving up 300 yards per game, so it could be another rough week for Murray and that offense. Speaking of the Rams, what is going on with this team? They're three and five on the year. And with a loss this week against the Cardinals, that would put themselves in the basement of the NFC West. The good news is they have already beaten the Cardinals team this season, actually in Arizona. And having lost five of the six games, they need some sort of confidence booster heading into this matchup. And that might just be what they need, knowing that they've already beaten them. The main problem is the offensive side of the ball and Matthew Stafford in this Rams rushing attack. Yes, Stafford completing nearly 69% of his passes, 
but his average pass is only six yards. He's thrown only ten, eight touchdowns with eight interceptions on the season. Not great when it's a one-to-one -one TD to INT ratio. Rams rushing attack is as lonely as Baker Mayfield's soul as he's headbutting his teammates as he sits on the sidelines. Henderson and Akers have tallied only 370 yards on the ground this season as a team. They just average a small amount above three yards per carry. This week, however, they can just focus on attacking a weak Cardinals secondary, one that gives up 252 yards per game, including 275 to Geno Smith and the Seahawks just a week ago. So what is our best bet in this NFC West bottom dweller matchup? Well, the Cardinals have been a team this season who has no theme song. It looks like week to week they change their game plan. They don't know what they're doing. One week it looks like they believe they're a rushing team. The next they're a passing team. Last time these two teams faced off, Kyler Murray threw the ball 58 times for 315 yards and no touchdowns. The Cardinals just put up 12 points. The Rams secondary at home has been great, only allowing 180 yards passing. Let's be real for a moment. The Rams are only one and a half games out of first place in their division, and they still have two more games against the first place Seahawks. They just need to take care of business this week, and we think they will. So with our final best bet of week number 10 in the NFL, we're going to take the LA Rams minus one over the Arizona Cardinals. Well, that does it for us here at Grandstand Betters. As always, sit back, relax, enjoy Week 10 in the NFL, and we'll see you live right here on YouTube for Browns Dolphins on Sunday.